You know, I've been watching and reviewing a lot of old crime films lately, so I thought it might be fun to visit something a little more lighthearted this time. So let's go see what our friend Tarzan is up to. The movie Tarzan Finds a Son from 1939 was an enjoyable movie where Tarzan and Jane discover a child in a crashed airplane in the jungle, and they raise him as their own. But will some sneaky explorers try to ruin their jungle family? Well, let's find out. I'll talk about the film and then offer some closing thoughts. My dear boy, have your breakfast before Tarzan eats you raw. Nippadoo. Sugarun Pandal. Palula. <laughs> well, the film opens up with a young couple. They're traveling with their infant child. They're in an airplane high above Africa. And the plane starts bobbing and shaking. Apparently, it's got some sort of a mechanical issue, and the pilot tries to make an emergency landing. I don't think they succeeded, though, because later it appears the plane has crashed. However, we hear the sound of a baby crying. There's a group of chimpanzees nearby, and one of them comes along and takes the baby away. So at this point, it's almost like the Tarzan formula. There's a baby that has survived and gets picked up. Now, Cheetah is nearby at Tarzan's place, and here's the baby crying and swings into action, grabs the baby, and when Tarzan arrives, he just sort of flings the baby to him. <laughs> uh, Tarzan brings the baby home and offers the baby what looks like a big old turkey leg to eat. But <laughs> silly Tarzan. Now Jane shows up and she's a little more sensible and maternal here and takes care of the baby. She wants some coconut milk for him, but Tarzan, well, he's hungry and he wants to eat first. Well, hurry Tarzan, the poor little thing's hungry. Tarzan, eat now. Tarzan, you go get those coconuts at once. Well, Tarzan takes off running on a hunt, and Cheetah is milking a deer? Wow, that's kind of strange, but okay. Jane puts this into a bottle for the baby, and Tarzan, meanwhile, has built a Gilligan's Island-style crib for the baby. Thank you, Father, says Jane as the baby's voice, but Tarzan doesn't seem so cool with the idea of fatherhood just yet. But he and Jane talk, and they decide on a name for the baby. Boy! I wonder why they didn't think of a name like Floyd. Anyhow, before you know it, the film has advanced ahead, and he's grown to about seven or eight, I would say. So, the question is, what about looking for the parents? Did they never head to town to try to talk to some officials? But I guess they didn't care. I guess it's sort of like the Clarks finding Kal-El out in Smallville. I'm always worrying about something, aren't I? You know, before Boy came, I used to worry that one day you mightn't come home. Jane home, Tarzan come home. So they go to Jane, who has noticed that one of the elephants is injured. Tarzan sees that it was from a gunshot. And sadly, they have to say farewell to the elephant. And they explain to Boy that this elephant has to leave for the elephant graveyard. It's kind of dark. But the elephant has a baby, and the baby wants to go along with the parent, but Tarzan kind of helps direct it away, and Boy gives it some food and tries to ride it, but gets thrown Boy then goes and thinks it's a good idea to throw stones at some hippos. I don't know about that. And this leads to a lot of stock footage of wild animals. An alligator, a cheetah, some birds, hyenas, a panther, and so on. He finds some tiger cubs to play with, but when the mother returns, he runs away and gets caught in a huge spider web. Well, Boy does his emergency Tarzan call. It's basically just the Tarzan call at a higher frequency, I think. And Tarzan comes running. And some comically oversized puppet spiders slowly converge on Boy as he struggles in the web. But Tarzan arrives for the save. And Tarzan and Jane help clear away the webs. But Tarzan hears something and orders Jane to take Boy home right away. He runs to the edge of a cliff and he sees a group of explorers. Now, they're a search party... They're looking for any survivors from the plane crash because it turns out that the baby that was on this plane is the heir to the Greystoke family fortune and is worth millions of dollars. The search party is led by the Lansing family, who are distant cousins. They go exploring, and they do find the crashed plane and look through it. The character Austin Lansing, played by actor Ian Hunter, and Mrs. Lansing, played by Frida Innescourt, are the main two. And with them is the senior, Sir Thomas Lansing, who's played by Henry Stevenson. 
Well, the explorers find their guns sabotaged, and you guessed it, this was Tarzan's handiwork. He drops in and yells at them to leave. He's ready to beat them all up when Jane arrives and tries to figure out what's going on here. And she invites them all back to their house for a meal, one mostly of fruit. And Tarzan, he seems distrustful of these people. Well, once the explorers have all arrived for dinner, Mrs. Lansing goes in to talk with Jane to see if she needs any help in the kitchen as she's cooking a massive egg. It's pretty cool, actually. Tarzan and Boy are at the table, and they seem to be left out of the conversation, so they just kind of start joking amongst themselves, including Cheetah, who gets in on the joking as well. Now, Jane joins them and the explorers at the table, and they explain to her what they're doing, how they're looking for this nephew of the Earl of Greystoke. Jane seems to be putting it together and tells them that they all died and that the entire family was buried. And I guess they seem convinced for now. Or do they? Poor young Richard's wife. Everything to live for. Youth, health, wealth. A splendid young husband and a little son. It was a son. A son? I believe so. Well, Sir Thomas smokes his pipe and watches as Tarzan and Boy have a swim with an elephant. And what follows is an uncomfortably long game of hide-and-seek underwater, as both of them can apparently hold their breath for a ridiculous duration of time. They also chase after a sea turtle underwater and kind of bug it, and then they climb out of the water and swing around, chasing each other, and Tarzan seems annoyed with Boy, who's fooling around all the time, but he gets over it pretty quick. However, wouldn't you know it, Boy takes a rest on a giant lily pad, and it just happens to get swept away down the river towards some waterfalls. Tarzan swims to the rescue, and all is well. Now back at the camp, Sir Thomas confides to the other explorers that he's figured out that Boy is a surviving Greystoke descendant. And he wants to go and tell Tarzan first that they're going to bring him back to civilization, but Arthur has him confined to his tent, so he can't leave or say anything. Now, Tarzan, however, watches from up above in a tree, and later that night he sneaks around the camp, and you guessed it, he steals all of those terrible guns, and he takes them, gathers them all up, and you know, I like the visual of this scene. He flings all these guns into a deep lake. Well, back at the camp, Cheetah is playing around with a tissue box in one of the tents and finds a camera setting it off. And the explorers wake up later, they develop the film, and they discover that Cheetah has accidentally caught a picture of Tarzan, so they know he's been snooping around. Now, Jane shows up the next day, and they try to talk to her reasonably that Boy will be well taken care of if they bring him back to civilization, and he won't have to live a life of danger anymore in the jungle. Now, this seems to spark with Jane, who we see is a little concerned earlier with Boy's safety. But Tarzan isn't having it, though, when he barks at the explorers to go. And Boy suddenly cries out as he's being chased by a rhino. So Tarzan runs into action. He jumps on this growling rhino and kills it. Do rhinos growl? Well, whatever. Tarzan saves Boy. Now, the explorers watch all of this, and they want to bring Boy back. But they're going to leave things be for the present, as they think Jane might be coming to their side with this. And sure enough, later that night, as Tarzan watches over the jungle, Jane goes to talk to him and pleads with him to let Boy go back with these explorers. Tarzan, of course, is unmoving. No, Boy, stay. Jane, sleep. Charles, there's nothing I can say or do will make you change your mind. If I ask you to do it because you love me. No. Boy, stay. Boy, stay. Well, the next day, Jane says she's okay with Boy staying, but that Tarzan should go and retrieve the guns from that deep lake so that the explorers can leave safely. Tarzan agrees, and he and Jane head to get the guns, but she's got a suspicious look to her. She lowers him down into this deep ravine that leads to the lake by a rope, but uh uh-oh, Jane, what are you thinking? She's cut the rope, and she deviously plans to leave Tarzan stranded down there while she goes back with Boy. Oh man, I don't know about this idea, Jane. And Tarzan sees the cut rope and is probably thinking, son of a monkey. Jane brings Boy back to the explorers and they head out with him. But Sir Thomas speaks to Jane privately as they're moving and tells her that these folks only want the boy's fortune and they don't care about his well-being at all. 
and he tries to fall back a little bit to make a distraction so she can get away. But he ends up getting shot, the poor old guy. Man, these mean people, they mean business here. She tries to lead them down another path to avoid going through the Zambili country, but they don't buy it. They think maybe she's just trying to distract them, but sure enough, as they continue on, they find a doll looking thing on a tree that used to be a full grown man. <laughs> okay, but they decide to turn back, but too late, they're surrounded by the natives who take them into their village. And while there, there's a sacrifice going on, you know, Temple of Doom style on one of these natives. And they have to watch this while they are held captive. Now, Jane spots a monkey that is sneaking through a bamboo wall. It's just big enough that Boy could probably get through. So she tells Boy to run and get Tarzan. So Jane sends him off, kind of running behind him as a distraction. But some natives see her and throw a spear at her, hitting her right in the back. Oh no, what's going to happen to Jane? Is this the end? Will Boy be able to make it? Because as he runs for help, he's almost instantly chased by a hungry lion. Can he make it to Tarzan in time and bring him back? Well, you're going to have to watch the exciting ending for yourself to see what happens. So some closing thoughts on Tarzan Finds His Son. This was a fun return to the world of Tarzan. This was the fourth in the MGM Tarzan series with Johnny Weismuller as Tarzan. And it's the fourth of six films in which he stars with Maureen O'Sullivan as the character Jane. Apparently, there was a three-year gap between this film and the previous Tarzan film because MGM had originally let the film rights lapse from Tarzan Escapes. Producer Sol Lesser had apparently gotten the rights to make five Tarzan movies, but the first one, Tarzan's Revenge, turned out to be a flop. I reviewed that one on this channel a while ago, and it was okay. It had Glenn Morris as Tarzan. He did a good job, but maybe he didn't have the same appeal as, say, Johnny Weismuller. So they brought him back into the series and they kind of restarted the series again. Now, I have to admit, watching this and watching a lot of the Tarzan films in general, I have some confusion regarding the marital relationship of Tarzan and Jane. Now, I haven't watched them all. I may have missed this being explained before. I was under the impression that they were married. And with the Hays Code in full swing, I can't imagine that Jane was living with Tarzan unmarried. But when I was researching this film, a few of the sources said that they were not married. But in this film itself, she refers to being married to Tarzan. My husband has learned not to trust guns. Your husband? Yes. So, I mean, they could have had a baby the old-fashioned way. But for some reason, the producers went with a They Find a Baby device, which I guess works. Tarzan is clearly very fond of his son in this film, and it's established that he's a pretty cool father figure to him as well, teaching Boy all about the ways of living in the jungle and survival in general. And quite an education, really. He can even speak some of the animal languages, you know, Abu Kala, Umgawa, you know, all that stuff. Both seem content to just go swimming and swing around in the trees and so on. And the fact that Boy does seem to be so well acclimated to the jungle living made it seem a little odd to me that Jane was willing to have him sent away to civilization. I mean, sure, living in the jungle, there's the occasional frenzied rhino attack or the creepy giant spiders. But I mean, heck, in the real world of the 1940s, you've got things like polio and World War II. Tarzan, Jane, and Boy make a nice family unit. And yes, Cheetah too. And it was fun to see how this arrangement all began, how they sort of formed this family. It's interesting that other than the opening and closing credits, there was also no music to this film, which was really a shame. You know, a stirring soundtrack is always appreciated when it goes with the Tarzan character. I mean, for instance, I'm reminded of the film Tarzan and the Mermaids from 1948. It came out about 10 years later that had a very exciting Dimitri Tiomkin score. It was very memorable to me. Okay, before I wrap up the review, just a semi-spoiler here. So if you haven't seen the film and you want to, and you don't want the ending ruined, just stop the review. Okay? Anyhow, Maureen O'Sullivan apparently wanted out of the series, and she was tired of the role 
it wanted for her character to actually die in this film as a result of the spear wound. She was ready to put her career on hold as she was actually pregnant at the time with her first child. Now, audiences apparently saw the ending where she dies and protested. And they changed the ending of the film so she survives. And she's subsequently in two more Tarzan films. And to be honest, watching the end of the film, it does look like a pretty severe injury. And it also looks like they were building to having her actually die. As you watch the film, it kind of feels like it's leading that way. But as it turns out, this was not the end for Jane. And no Tarzan, I'll be fine. Tis but a flesh wound. So that's Tarzan Finds a Son from 1939. It was a fun movie. It's worth checking out.